It is September 2004. Ivan, the largest hurricane of the year, is en route to deliver an unwanted visitor from south of our border. We had identified Ivan as one that had high potential to move spores directly from South America into North America. Scott Izard is Penn State University's professor of aerobiology, the study of how organisms and biological particles are dispersed through air. For two years before Hurricane Ivan, Scott had followed the spread of a plant disease new to South America, Asian soybean rust. This fungus destroys valuable soybean crops, but up to 2004, it had never entered the continental United States. He and others developed a computer model that could predict if the disease would enter America if carried by a storm like Ivan. Scott's model was designed to help us understand when and where it would come. Well, there were a number of things going on simultaneously. We were, we were preparing. The states were getting their state plans ready of how they were going to respond when they found it. Also, we, there was quite a bit of training going on for the specialists in the field who might be the first ones to find it. They had to know what it looked like, how to search for it. Scott said to me it was a lucky forecast, but I don't think it was lucky. I think it was brilliant. The brilliance of proactive planning paid off again. After Hurricane Ivan hit the U.S. Gulf Coast, Ray Schneider, a plant pathologist from the LSU Ag Center, found the first known case of Asian soybean rust in the United States. Ray was part of the training. He was the first to find it in Louisiana. It was definitely red alert. We knew, we'd been planning for a year or two, we knew that it was likely to arrive. Trained as a first detector through CSR EES biosecurity funding, Ray knew immediately what to do. He visually identified the disease as soybean rust at this experimental plot near Baton Rouge. He took samples and digital stills of the fungus for others to verify his finding. Then he contacted his colleague, Clayton Ollier, who had recently developed Louisiana's Rust Detection Action Plan. This is Clayton Ollier in Louisiana. I really need you to call me back. We may have something here that all of you would like to see. I believe that we have soybean rust. I never thought I'd be able to say that, but it looks like we do, and a sample will be leaving here today. We talked quite a bit with, with Ray Schneider and Clayton Hollier. They sent digital images so that we could look at what they had been looking at. The day we've dreaded was here. As planned, the first detectors immediately sent samples to the United States Department of Agriculture's Systematic Botany and Mycology Lab in Beltsville, Maryland. And that started a flurry of activity. Mary Palm works here. She is our country's national mycologist, one who studies fungi that cause plant disease. Pieces of the suspected rust sample were shaved off for closer viewing under a high-powered microscope. All indications were that Ray Schneider's sample was, indeed, infected with Asian soybean rust. Next, the sample was sent to another USDA APHIS facility in Beltsville, the National Plant Germplasm and Biotechnology Laboratory. Here, the fungus was analyzed at the molecular level. DNA was extracted. Samples were put into a real-time cycler for further testing. Miles away, Mary Palm awaited the results. We did confirm by real-time PCR the presence of... The second lab confirmed Mary's findings. Asian soybean rust had reached America's shores for the first time in history. This morning, it is my duty to announce to you that we have confirmed a detection of soybean rust a fungal disease of soybeans from two plots associated with a Louisiana State Research Farm near Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'd like to there were eight more finds right in a row, and the incredible thing was that it was a perfect perimeter of where Ivan had come in. It was just an outline of where that hurricane had impacted. 
Hi, Kitty. This is Ed. I'm here with uh, Steve Munch and David Wright. We're calling to talk with you about... Ed uh, Reddy and his colleagues from the United Soybean and, uh, Board in St. Louis had great concern that the Asian soybean rust brought in by Hurricane Ivan would survive the winter. If it did, the rust invasion could seriously threaten the 2005 soybean crop. They didn't ask. They were very, very polite gentlemen, but they told us they wanted a real-time tracking system. They wanted to be able to have a tool ready for growers in the 05 season. The concern was real. Soybeans are a major crop for the United States. Annual harvests average around $15 billion. By having a computer tracking system, soybean farmers would be able to make informed decisions on whether or not to spray for the rust disease. CSREES funded Scott Izard and others to build the rust tracker. Both from a biological point of view and also from putting us in the position to be able to gear up without the, uh, the initial uh, thinking that went into that grant, it could not have happened. And so we immediately kicked up into high gear, put a lot more people, programmers, onto the operation and were ready by early spring to go into a forecast mode on a daily basis. They completed in five months what normally would take one to two years to do. Penn State joined forces with ZX, a private sector technology company, to help meet the deadline. We weren't sure how well it would work, but oh, it was fabulous, it was excellent. It, it was astonishing. <laughs> People from all over the world watched this thing. It saves a lot of money because putting on sprays is costly. It's in the hundreds of millions of dollars in savings, just in the sprays alone. And it's good for the environment because we're not putting more fungicides into the water and into the air, and it's better for us all. Soybean farmers like David Brown from Illinois have benefited greatly from the speed at which USDA responded to the rust invasion. This effective disease forecasting has introduced new ways of looking at IPM, Integrated Pest Management. It's really changing the way we do IPM. It's a paradigm shift, this using of the web and information technology. It's the new wave of how we do this. CSREES funds the National Plant Diagnostics Network and the National Animal Health Laboratory Network in response to America's biosecurity issues.